What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to our series, How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we are ranking every playable option to players of Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and ranking all of their abilities on a scale of 1 to 10. And today we are actually following up on Tuesday's video, where we ranked the Armorer subclass available to Artificers, and yeah this thing this thing's pretty cool this thing's pretty cool so i am excited to build one with you all and we're going to go through an example build and we're going to look at some options i'm going to give you some alternative options as well on top of what i'm doing in this build and it's going to be a lot of fun so make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already as you can see the vast majority of my viewers of this channel are actually not subscribed and so if you would go ahead and click that button right there and then click the bell right next to it that way you you don't miss any of my future uploads that will definitely help this channel grow so that we can reach more and more people in the comment section down below help me beat the algorithm by leaving me a comment and letting me know what your favorite feature of this would be and what your kind of build would be for your own armor. I'm excited to see what your ideas are, what other feats, what other kinds of multi-classing options, anything like that. I'd love to see that down in the comments section below. So as we saw in Tuesday's video, when we did our ranking for the armorer, this thing ranked pretty well. So if you haven't seen that video, that will go into a lot of detail about what the armorer does um, and talk about each of its abilities in detail. But yeah, we ranked this a 10 out of 10. Um, this is absolutely amazing. Here is where we are on both of the subclasses for this class so far, and we will continue to update this list as we go. But yeah, this thing is absolutely ridiculous. 10 out of 10 is not something I'm going to give out very often, but this thing deserves it. And I think that you will see that as we go through this build, even though we're doing a little bit more of a goofy gimmick build on this time around. So yeah, this thing's gonna be really, really fun. It's really awesome. One note, we are going to be focusing on the guardian model today rather than the infiltrator model. If you would like to see a video in the future that is focused on the infiltrator model, we can do that. Just let me know down in the comments below. Before we get started, I wanna make sure that we get a couple of rules out of the way for these builds, just a few. The first First one is that we are going to be using a standard array for this and I just wanted to use this standard array so that we keep everything consistent as we go throughout the series. I don't want a particular class or subclass to feel broken versus not very good just because stats were rolled better versus uh, a better point by anything like that. I don't want that to feel unfair and so we're just going to use a modified standard array. This is actually becoming pretty standard nowadays. Um, but of course, always ask your DM what system he or she prefers and then go with that for your table. Um, but just for this series, we're gonna go with the modified uh, standard array. The second rule is that we must take our first level in this class, just so that we are featuring the featured class and subclass. And to combo off of that, we must take at least 11 levels in this class or subclass. And this just makes sure that we are taking the majority of the levels in this so that we don't end up doing something incredibly similar later. Um, this just makes sure that we're keeping everything as different as possible. So yeah, I wanted to make sure that the stats were even and the power comes from our choices as far as what levels to take, when to multi-class, if to multi-class, anything like that. Um, today, we're actually not going to be multi-classing at all. It's going to be a straight level 20 build of the armorer because it's it's insane what you can do with this thing. Um, and if you would like some multi-classing options, at the end of this video, we will be going over some other options that I came up with. Um, I've got two other builds that I went through that I thought were really, really cool before I settled on this one. And so I wanted to go ahead and talk about those at the very end. So make sure you stick around for that. So let's go ahead and get started with our stats. And we're going to, of course, give our highest stat to intelligence. This is going to fuel all of our different spells, help our spell saving throw DC, all of those fun things allow us to prepare more spells, which is always great. Um, yeah, all of all of the fun things that uh, that we love here, um, we're definitely going to want to fuel that. Now, last time we took dexterity as our second highest stat. This time we're going to take constitution. Constitution is going to be really, really great because we are going to be the front line as much as we possibly can, and we are slightly squishy because we are 
you know, a D8 hit die. Um, this definitely makes a case for taking the tough feat. We're actually not taking that in this build, but there's definitely a very good case to be made for that. Um, but yeah, our HP is a little low, so we want to go ahead and take as much constitution as we can without sacrificing anything from our spell casting. Our next two abilities are going to be dexterity and wisdom. These can be flip-flopped depending on how you feel about it. We are going to be taking a feat that is going to help with our dexterity saving throws. So you could make the argument to go ahead and put that in wisdom to help with wisdom saving throws. Um, or you could put it into dexterity just to boost them up even higher. Um, for this build, we're going to go ahead and put it in dexterity, but you could definitely make a case for wisdom. Um, and wisdom could also make a difference in where you multi-class. So just, you know, be thinking about if you're going to multi-class into something like cleric later on down the road, definitely put that into wisdom rather than dexterity and then of course for the last two we're just going to be basically dumping strength and charisma however we're going to find interesting ways to use strength later and so i think that this will actually be uh, a pretty fun little way to use this so Let's go ahead and look at what we get next. For the race in this build, I actually went back and forth amongst three different options. Um, I thought about going Gnome again. I thought Gnome might be a decent option here. Obviously getting the intelligence boost is great. Helping with our saving throws against magic is always amazing. Um, so definitely a good case for that. I thought about going Warforged to make us a little bit bulkier, which would be great. However, I ended up going with the most vanilla option possible, and that is the Variant Human. You will definitely be seeing Variant Human a lot throughout these build guides because it's just really hard to deny how good it really is. Um, so even though this is not a power build, the reason I wanted to take this is because we get a feat at level one, and I wanted to make sure that we can go ahead and start our gimmick early because it's just stupid and hilarious and I love it. So yeah, remember these builds are not power builds. These are for fun, and so we're gonna be doing some weird things that aren't necessarily optimized, and that's on purpose because we're here to have fun. So at level one, we get two ability score boosts by one, and so we're gonna go ahead and obviously put that into intelligence and constitution that will give us a bump in both of those. So that's really great. Um, however, we're here for the feat and the feat we're gonna actually take is Shield Master. Now Shield Master is a feat that isn't, at least in my groups, has never been super popular. Um, it's a little bit niche depending on your character, um, but I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, gives you an extra thing to do with your bonus action, which armors don't necessarily have a whole lot to do with their bonus action. Um, you are not the artillerist or the battlesmith that has a pet running around. And so this gives you a really cool use of your bonus action that you didn't have already, which is really cool. So we can shove people and knock them prone. Now keep in mind, you cannot shove them and then attack them. You do have to take the attack action and then shove them. But this sets up your fighter or your barbarian to come in and just whack and go ham on them and just go absolutely nuts. And so this is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's nice. So we do get one proficiency as well out of this. We're going to take athletics because athletics is the stat that we use for our shove. And so we're definitely gonna want to have proficiency in that. And we're gonna find ways to boost that up even more as we go. Um, we're gonna take urchin as our background as well so that we can pick up a proficiency in stealth because we're just gonna be clanking around this whole time. Of course, remember that you can switch over to infiltrator armor if you want to once you hit level three but um, it's it's still gonna be pretty loud once we hit there. Um, but yeah, so as far as as far as our armor goes, for this build, we're going to assume that at level one, you can pick up a shield and that at level three, we pick up plate armor as far as for our AC calculations. Yours may vary depending on availability in the world, um, depending on price, all of those things. Um, so different factors could come into play there. Um, so we're just gonna be doing a little bit of assuming just to, just to move the build along. All right, so now we are ready to go ahead and take our first level, and of course, it's going to be in Artificer. So we get two cantrips out of this, and we're going to take Guidance and Firebolt. Now, Guidance is a great little buffing cantrip, and you never are gonna wanna turn that one down. And Firebolt gives us some really good ranged on-demand damage. So this is really nice, especially since we're going to be focusing on being up in people's faces once we get to level three. This is going to give us something that's a little bit more 
reliable as far as being far away. We don't have to worry about trying to recover bolts from the light crossbow. We don't have to worry about throwing something. Um, it's it's gonna be really, really nice as just reliable damage we can do all the time. So definitely really, really nice to pick up. Um, for now, we will take the studded leather armor. Um, we're not gonna go with heavy metal for right now. We're just gonna stick with the, uh, with the not disadvantage on stealth, um, at least for these first few levels. And then we will just kind of bite the bullet on that one as we go. Um, so yeah, as far as our skills, we're gonna go ahead and pick up investigation and perception. Obviously you can change those out if it fits your setting just a little bit better. And then finally, we'll just grab two spears, our light crossbow, thieves tools, tinkers tools, and then smith's tools, because you know we work on our armor, which is great. Um, and then of course we get our spell casting and magical tinkering. Some standout spells for this build are of course going to be Absorb Elements once again. Um, absorb Elements is going to help you out. And then we've got things like Fairy Fire to help out your allies. So we are going to be much more of a support build in this one rather than a going all out for damage kind of build. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. We're not here to necessarily optimize um, knocking out people single-handedly. That's not our job here. Um, our job in this build is going to be taking enemies and basically locking them down to where if they try to attack someone other than you, they are going to have a really, really tough time. And then when they try to attack you, they're also going to have a really, really hard time. So it's basically about taking certain enemies and just removing them from the fight and knocking them out um, while you also throw out the buff spells um, and use your concentration to help either yourself or your allies to just absolutely go nuts. So definitely keep that in mind. We're not going super hard on the damage in this build. Um, it is definitely more geared toward the support one. So now we're going into level two and now we get to infuse items and now is where things get fun. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pick up one of the best ones out there and that is going to be enhanced defense and we're gonna stick that on our shield rather than our armor. So if you read shield master really closely, it has to do with how much of an AC boost your shield gives you. And so now the shield boost is actually plus three. You get the plus two from the shield and now plus one from enhanced defense. So now your dexterity saving throws are a plus three, which is really, really cool cool. Um, and so yeah, it works really, really well with that. It's going to go to a plus four at level 10, which is awesome. And then we're also going to take enhanced weapon and stick it on our gauntlet once we get to level three. For now, we're going to go ahead and put it on our light crossbow. Um, it, it's great for now. And then we can switch it over once we level up and get our heavy armor. So at level three, we're gonna go ahead and pick up our subclass of the armor, and we're going to choose the guardian model at least like 95% of the time. Like I said, you can switch out for the infiltrator model if you ever need to be super sneaky, um, but we are going to be focusing primarily on the guardian model of locking people down in melee, which is pretty cool. Um, and we're gonna get some really, really cool features out of this. So we're going to be able to attack with our gauntlets now, um, and that allows us to use our intelligence model fire rather than strength or dexterity, which is always a great thing because we are not really focusing on those stats, which is, you know, it is what it is. Um, and it also allows us to give disadvantage to the creature once we hit it, if it tries to attack someone other than us. So we're now cranking our AC. We just jumped in AC from 16 to 21. And so that's really great. Um, so yeah, basically we're giving disadvantage if something tries to hit someone other than us and they have to roll at least a 21 in order to hit us. So we're doing pretty good for ourselves right now at level three, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I love it, it's, it's great. At level three is when we really start showing some power. So yeah, level one and two are tough. It's when most characters die because you know there's no bringing back to life and healing potions are a little low but so just survive to level three and you'll start doing a whole lot better so at level four we go ahead and take an ability score improvement or a feat and we're going to go ahead and take the ability score improvement um, i definitely want to go ahead and get intelligence up to 20 early because we're going to get a whole lot of mileage out of that and it's going to be really really helpful going forward um, get us to be able to take another spell we're going to have a better saving throw dc we're going to be able to hit our fire bolts more often it's just all around a really, really good bring to go ahead and get that early. 
At level five, we go ahead and get our extra attack, which is amazing. So now we can just punch people twice, which is awesome. And we also get access to second level spells. Now this build here actually makes really, really good use of the spell in large reduce because now we get advantage on strength checks, which will include trying to knock people prone. So we can go ahead and enlarge ourselves or reduce the size of opponents and just start pushing them around and start bullying them all over the place because that's, you know, that's what we do in D&D. &D. We just bully our opponents and it's great. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be able to just start pushing people around and doing really, really cool things. Um, web is another option here to take. Um, web is cool because you can now shove them into the web. And so even if they break out of it, you just shove them right back in. Um, so that can be a little bit frustrating for, for your DM to try to get the uh, creatures out of there. Uh, so definitely some really cool options there for you to think about. At level six, we get a couple of things here. We do get our tool expertise, which is eh, whatever. We're really good at picking locks now, I guess. Um, but we also get another infusion slot, which is really good. And we get the spell refueling ring, which is what we're going to take here. Another interesting option you could take is if you ever wanted to put your shield away and just start punching people with both hands, um, you could think about taking the radiant weapon infusion and put that on your other hand. Um, so you could have, you know, enhanced weapon on one hand as well as radiant weapon on the other. And so now you have a chance of blinding people, which is pretty cool. It's not the most, it's not the most busted infusion out there. Um, and the blinding chance is a little rough because you have to use the charge before you find out whether or not it worked. Um, so you could waste it, which is, you know, eh, but it's still, it's still decent. You know, it still gives plus one to the other gauntlet if you really want to do that. Um, and then gives a chance for a secondary effect. So it's cool. We're going to go with the spell refueling ring on this build, but definitely something to consider. So at level seven, we get Flash of Genius. And so this is where things start getting a little interesting with how they combo in with the Shieldmaster feat. So keep in mind that both Shieldmaster and the uh, Flash of Genius both give you ways of using your reaction. Um, but basically we now have a system to where if we're forced to make a dexterity saving throw, it's going to be very rare that we ever take full damage. Um, we're usually going to be taking at most half damage and a lot of the times we also could just take no damage at all because we also have half of evasion within the Shieldmaster feat. So keep one thing in mind about the Shieldmaster feat is that if you are forced to make a dexterity saving throw and it targets more than one creature, so it's you and at least one other creature, you do not get the boost to your dexterity saving throws from your shield. Um, it is only if it targets just you. So. Definitely keep that in mind. That definitely makes it a little bit worse. Um, but yeah, it is it is something to keep in mind. However, we do get two different uses of our reaction here. So let's say we're hit with a fireball and we want to add this bonus with our, uh, with our saving throw. So we go ahead and roll, we fail the saving throw, add flash of genius, now we pass it. Great, we take half damage. Well, let's say that we passed it and we're really low. We really don't wanna take half damage. Well, then we just use the Shieldmaster feat to take zero damage instead. And so this is really, really cool. Um, you only get one or the other. You don't get to use your reaction to pass the check and then use your reaction again to then make it zero. Doesn't work that way. You can't do both on the same turn, um, but you can do one or the other. And so basically most of the time, the max you're gonna take is going to be that half damage, which is still incredibly useful. So at level eight, we get either another ability score improvement or a feat, and we're going to take a feat here. Um, we're actually going to take Magic Initiate, but we're not going to take Wizard like what you would expect. We're actually going to take Warlock. Um, Warlock is gonna give us a really, really interesting first level spell to take, and don't worry, we don't need a high charisma in order to use it. Um, as far as our cantrips go that we get out of this, we will go ahead and just take Toll the Dead and press Digitation. We get damage and utility which is great. Um, but for our first level spell, we're going to get Armor of Agathis. We're an armorer. We have to take a spell that has armor in the name. I mean, come on. It's just it's just what we got to do. And so now we have Armor of Agathis, so now we can have Ice Armor, which is absolutely awesome. It also helps us a little bit with how squishy we are it's because, you know, we definitely don't want to take a whole lot of damage because we are a D8 hit die. 
but now we get some temporary HP, which is great. So keep in mind that we only get one casting of this per day, but Armor of Agathis lasts for a pretty long time. So that is really nice. It does give us that little bit of versatility here. And so I think that that's going to be more useful than something like Shield on the Wizard. Um, yeah, Shield on the Wizard is great, but we only get to do it once per long rest. And so I think you're gonna get a whole lot more mileage out of Armor of Agathis than you are out of one thing that lasts for one round. Um, so yeah, definitely definitely a matter of opinion there, but I, I think you're gonna get more mileage out of this. So at level nine, we get to split our armor up into different pieces just for the sake of our infusions. And so we are going to now have a little bit more options to go with here. Um, and so we're going to actually put the Armor of Magical Strength on us. Normally this is not an infusion I would recommend, but I like it here on this build. This gives us the ability to shove people that much easier. And so, yeah, we just are better at being a bully now and I, I love it. That's what this build is. It's just a, a shiny bully with ice armor because we can and it's Dungeons and Dragons. So we just, just kind of do whatever we want here. Um, we also get third level spells here. So now haste is a thing. Um, so now we have to choose between enlarge, reduce and haste, but they're basically right at the right time. So now instead of having to worry about having advantage, we now have plus five because we have that ability. So that's really, really awesome. Um, and so, yeah, now we can just have haste and boost our AC and go crazy, it's awesome. So yeah, level nine is crazy, and level 10 is even better. So at level 10, we get one more attunement slot, which is awesome. Um, and so let's go ahead and take just a second to look at what all we have here. Um, so at level 10, for our infusions, we have our magical gauntlet with enhanced weapon, which is now a plus two weapon that gives disadvantage if they try to attack someone other than you. Cool. Um, we are wearing our heavy armor, which has the armor of magical strength on it. We have our magic shield that gives us a plus four to AC, so we're at a 22. We now have the ability to craft a cloak of protection and that puts us at 23. And so now we can have haste up as well and be at 25. This is really awesome. Um, and that still leaves two more slots. So we also can have the spell refueling ring and the winged boots. So yeah, now we can fly. It's it's great. It's absolutely awesome. Um, we get also one more cantrip here. We'll take Thorn Whip. This gives us some more battlefield control as far as moving people around, which is exactly what we want to do. So I think it's a really, really cool option here. So at level 11, we now get the spell storing item. And so now we can let our fighter or barbarian cast in large reduce on us and then we get advantage and the plus five on being a bully and shoving people to the ground. So it's really, really cool, uh, the combination of that using our friend's concentration that normally would not be using concentration at all. Um, it's really cool opening up that option and just makes this gimmick all that more potent. At level 12, we are gonna get another ability score improvement or a feat, and I'm just gonna go ahead and take the plus two to constitution. So this does help us with maintaining concentration, of course, and our HP. Um, another option here to take would be tough. Um, I definitely think tough is a really cool, uh, cool one to take here to help with your HP because we are a little bit squishy. Um, and the other option is Warcaster. I decided not to take Warcaster on this build at all because you know, Warcaster is so good that it's going to end up on a lot of builds. So I wanted to mix it up for this build a little bit. Um, so yeah, we're just going to take the constitution boost. Uh, but either of those other two options are absolutely, uh, absolutely great options to take here. At level 13, we get our fourth level spells, such as Odalux Resilient Sphere, which is always really good. And at level 14, we get another attunement slot as well as an infusion. And so naturally, we're just going to take a Ring of Protection to add yet another plus one to our AC. Um, yeah, we're just boosting this AC just as high as we can possibly crank it because we can and it's fun and it's awesome. So. Yeah, it's, we're just making our DM really mad at us at this point, and it's a lot of fun, it's great. Also at level 14, we'll grab one more cantrip, which will be Mage Hand, because, you know, Mage Hand is, is so good. And then at level 15, we get our Magic Grappling Hook that we can just pull people from 30 feet away from us. We can fly and then also grab them from 30 feet. So if we're on the ground and they're 30 feet up, we just pull them down to us, or we can just punch them in the air. So 
yeah, we now have a lot of options as far as getting people to us and uh, being able to manipulate the battlefield here really, really well to our favor. Um, it's it's really, really awesome. Um, it's it's cool. And then we get to level 16 where we get another ability score improvement or feat. And we're going to take Sentinel. Now Sentinel is one that normally I take early on in my builds, but I thought that now is when it gets its most potent because now we're grabbing people from far away. If it's a little tougher to get in, we just grab them and pull them towards us and then punch them in the face and then keep them there and then they can't leave. And it's wonderful. Um, I absolutely love the combination of Sentinel with our ability to just grab people from 30 feet away and drag them towards us. And it just, it completely helps us with locking down certain enemies. So we could take a boss, for instance, a, even a mini boss, um, or just some goons and just basically remove them from the battlefield, um, put them in a position that they don't want to be in. So if it's just a, you know, smaller creature in the grand scheme, grab them, pull them over to you, punch them in the face. They now have disadvantage if they try to attack somebody else. If they try to run away, you punch them and they can't leave. If they try to attack you, they get hit with your ice armor. It's ju it's just bad news all around. And it's just a really, really cool kit. Um, it's just it's just a lot of fun to all work together. So at level 17, we finally get our fifth level spells. And of course, animate objects is one of the best ones that you can take there. And at level 18, we get our final attunement slot and our final infusion. We're gonna go ahead and take the Helm of Awareness. And so yes, it's very late to be taking the Helm of Awareness, but it's just really good. And this is something that you could technically have been passing around for a while with other people. And then now you're just like, no, I'm gonna take it. Um, because basically having, essentially having the alert feet on your head is pretty cool. Um, and at the cost of an infusion, especially with having the bonus infusions on the armor is not a big price to pay in my opinion. So yeah, Helm of Awareness is definitely what we're gonna wanna take here. You could even argue to take it earlier, um, but yeah, we're definitely gonna go ahead and just plop that on our heads real quick. At level 19, we get our final ability score improvement or feat. And we're going to take another one that you don't see all that often, but I wanted to use here again for the lesser used things, and that is Mage Slayer. Now, Mage Slayer basically is if you can get up in a spellcaster's face, you can kind of ruin their day. And our entire point is getting in people's face in order to ruin their day. So Mage Slayer basically is going to help us just completely neuter opposing spellcasters that normally would cause a whole lot of problems. Um, and so this is going to help out our allies. It's going to help us out. It's going to help to get rid of concentration a little bit easier, which is always a good thing. Um, just all kinds of different things that are all working together here. Um, and and just, I, I think that this is just too good with this specific build to pass up. Um, and I, I just, I saw this one and I was like, yeah, this, this just screams this build. So yeah, level 19 is late to take it, but I still think it's fine because we are gonna be facing either really strong beasts or really strong mages by the time we're level 18, 19, 20. And so, yeah, this is gonna basically shut down any of those really powerful wizards trying to take over the world. This is gonna, pretty much mess up their day pretty hard. So it's it's really cool as a comprehensive kit. And then finally at level 20, we get our Soul of Artifice. So now every time we get knocked to zero hit points, if we just end an infusion, we can just get back up, which is great. With the armor, we get two extras. And so now we get to go down eight times rather than six and then get back up. So yeah, it's even better now that we are on the armorer. And so, yeah, this is absolutely nuts. If something flies 30 feet in the air and you don't need the winged boots anymore, you can end the winged boots and just still grab them out of the air. So yeah, it's still, it's still incredibly useful here. You can start ending them one by one if you need to. And it's, it's great. Um, it's absolutely awesome. I think, I think it's great here. It's a little bit less of a trap just because you have a little bit more of a buffer here as far as your magic items go. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. 
So that's our build and I hope that you enjoyed that. Of course, leave me a comment down below letting me know what you liked, what you disliked, what your build would be for the armorer. So honorable mentions as far as our multi-classing options, I went through two different builds before I came to this one and both featured multi-classing. Um, I just felt that Soul of Artifice was too important on this build specifically for the armorer. And so I decided to not multi-class here. However, multi-classing is still very much a thing that you can do um, and it will work very, very well. So the first option that I looked at was actually the War Magic Wizard, uh, taking two levels of that. And so that was going to help us with our AC and saving throws. The plus two to AC is okay. The plus four to saving throws is pretty good though. Um, but you can kind of see where I kind of derived my shield main kind of uh, gimmick there. Um, and so I ended up going with the, the shield version rather than going with that way to build to uh, help with saving throws. So yeah, that's, that's kind of where that came from. And then as far as our other build goes, I actually went with the Peace Domain Cleric. Peace Domain Cleric has an amazing ability at level one, which is the bonding feature. Um, this very unique ability basically just allows you to be absolutely crazy and awesome as long as you're staying really close to your allies. And like I said, you are going to want to be up there and be the best friend of the fighter and of the barbarian who are just whacking on these people that you knock prone. And so the bond feature just works super well with the armorer build here. Um, and especially with this build in, in particular because you're just encouraging being right next to each other. But again, I wanted to go with the Soul of Artifice here. Um, and so I think that that's just a little bit more useful, but I can definitely see a great argument for taking that instead. Um, so yeah, that is all I've got for you today. I hope you guys have an amazing week, a safe one, and we will see you back here next week when we cover the Artillerist. I'm really excited about that one when we just start blowing stuff up with cannons and guns. It's great. So until then, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>